Vaishlach. The Torah portion of Vaishlach is full of deeper meanings hidden underneath the surface meaning. Yaakov returning to Canaan with an abundance of blessings points towards the return of the Jewish people. The story of the death of Rachel points to the Messiah. In Genesis 32 verse 4 it says, And Yaakov sent messengers before him to Esav, his brother, unto the land of Seir, the field of Edom. In the last Torah portion, Esav had plotted to kill his brother Yaakov soon after his father died. Rivka heard about this plot and sent Yaakov away from Canaan, telling him to stay there until Esav's anger cooled. And then she would send word that it is safe to come back. Esav's anger never cooled, and Rivka never sent any word. Now, twenty years later, with four wives and many flocks and cattle, Yaakov returns. Yaakov was worried that Esav was still angry. As stated earlier, Yaakov's return to Canaan symbolizes the final redemption, where God will gather his chosen people and bring them to the land of Israel. Yaakov's confrontation with Esav symbolizes the end times confrontation between Israel and the rest of the nations. Yaakov sent servants ahead of him to greet Esav with gifts and to give him an explanation as to what he'd been doing in the past 20 years. Yaakov told his servants to say that he returned with, as it says in Genesis 32 verse 6, oxen and donkeys and flocks, and men servants and maid servants. According to the Midrash, each one of these things has a special meaning in relation to the end times. The oxen refers to Messiah, son of Yosef. As Moshe said in Deuteronomy 33, verse 17, His first bullock, majesty, is his, and his horns are the horns of the wild ox. With them he shall gore peoples of all of them, even the ends of the earth. The donkeys referred to Messiah, son of David, as stated in Zechariah 9, verse 9, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, shout, O daughter of Yushalayim. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, he is triumphant, victorious, lowly, in riding upon an ass, even upon a colt, the foal of an ass. The flocks refer to the people of Israel, as it says in Ezekiel 34, verse 31. And ye, my sheep, the sheep of my pasture, are men, and I am your God. Thus saith the Lord God. Finally, the male and female servants refer to the God-fearing Gentile believers that will be redeemed, as it says in Deuteronomy 29, verse 10, Thy stranger that is in the midst of thy camp, from the hewer of thy wood unto the drawer of thy water. Rachel died giving birth to her second son, who she named Benoni, which means son of my troubles. Yaakov renamed him and called him Benjamin. Rachel symbolizes all of Israel, as it says in the Midrash and Torot Moshe. We find the entire nation of Israel is called by the name Rachel in Jeremiah 31 verse 15, Rachel weeping for her children. She named him Benoni in reference to the future sorrows of Israel for which she would mourn, as it says in Jeremiah 31 verse 15, Rachel weeping for her children. The two names of Rachel's second son point to Messiah. Benoni points to the first coming, and Benjamin points to the second coming. Benoni means son of my trouble. This describes the Messiah who is supposed to make war against the nations of Israel and die in battle. This describes the first coming of Yeshua, as it says in Matthew 10 verse 34, Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. The great exile of the Jewish people from their homeland and all the terrible things that have happened in the past 2,000 years all started with the coming of Yeshua. He has been a son of trouble for us indeed. When the Messiah returns, though, he will be seated at the right hand of the Father. Yaakov refers to this by the name Benjamin, which means son of my right hand. Psalms 80 verse 17 and 110 verse 1 also refer to Messiah being the man of your right hand. 
Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. In Genesis 35, verse 19 through 20, it says, And Rachel died and was buried in the way to Ephrath. The same is Bethlehem. And Yaakov set up a pillar upon her grave. The same is the pillar of Rachel's grave unto this day. The Midrash has an explanation as to why Rachel was buried in Ephrath instead of the cave of Machpelah, where the rest of the patriarchs and matriarchs are buried. Why did Yaakov bury Rachel in the way to Ephrath? Yaakov foresaw that the deportees going into exile would pass by that place, so he buried her there so that she could pray for mercy for them, as it is written, Rachel weeping for her children. Yaakov set up a pillar over Rachel's grave to stand as a monument for future generations. It will remain a monument until this day, meaning until the Messiah comes back. Since Rachel's life was an allusion to the life of Messiah, son of Yosef, Rachel's death and the mourning that follows is an allusion to the death of Messiah, son of Yosef. Just as Rachel intercedes with God on behalf of her children, Messiah, son of Yosef, intercedes with God on behalf of us. Like Rachel's grave, Yeshua's empty grave is a place of sorrow and hope for the redemption. Matthew 2, verse 17 through 18 has a connection between the birth of Yeshua and Rachel's weeping. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, In Ramah there was a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning. Rachel, weeping for her children, would not be comforted, because they are not. As Herod carried out his plan of mass infanticide, Again, Rachel let out another cry for her children. Her last words all that way from the time of Yaakov can be applied just as accurately to Yeshua as they were applied to Benjamin. This is the son of my trouble. It is said that Rachel to this day weeps for her children, but one day God will comfort Rachel and her losses will be repaid in full. As it says in Jeremiah 31 verse 16, Thus saith Hashem, Refrain thy voice from weeping, and thine eyes from tears. For thy work shall be rewarded, saith Hashem, and they shall come back from the land of the enemy. This speaks of the day when Mashiach will return and gather the people of Israel back to the land of Israel, where he will rule over the world, under Torah, and establish world peace.